Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy and bright Friday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. As always, want to be wishing you well, and we got plenty of Bitcoin action to talk about with the in and action overnight. As let's get in a live scene right over here, and as always, wishing you the happiest, the happiest, the best of the best Fridays possible. And now the good old Bitcoins. Bitcoin still hanging around this 89 exponential, the cyan moving average right here, which yes, it does match up with plenty of other resistances. This 236 Fibonacci retracement. This also historical, or not not necessarily historical, but going, but this uh, horizontal trend line going all the way back towards late November and this ascending trend line kind of governing our lower highs so far ever since this what looks to be massive bounce coming off the lows although still very questionable indeed however in the lower time frames I believe that is where all the action is going on and as you can see on the hourly right here we did witness I believe this trend line be broke yesterday uh, yesterday on stream that was your 39 uh, that was your 3910 area and Bitcoin didn't have one of those 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 reactions Actions that I want to see if a, if a real trend line is going to be broken. Now, of course, real fake. It, I, that's not the that's not my intention to to suggest that this is a fake trend line. No, what I'm saying is that what likely happens is if you don't get that full fall through, if you don't get the actual volume confirmation on a formation like this breaking down, well, then what typically happens is you get reaccumulated and you try again um, at that resistance trend line. So you can see that we've actually already had one, two, and it looks like we're going for a third retest right now. I'm completely flat as far as I'm concerned, um, position wise, but it does look like Bitcoin probably wants to give another test into this range, you know, 3940, maybe 3950, maybe even test this horizontal um, coming in formally at 3965. You also have to keep in mind, you know, that's going to be another meeting of all of those major resistances. So I actually would be looking for, for a position there, tentatively speaking. Um, but I am curious how our higher time frames are starting to turn around now. Uh, what is our 12 hour looking like? Yeah, 12 hour looks like it does want to, 12 hour does look looks like it wants to get back around that range. Uh, 12 hour stokes are actually uh, snaking around and crossing up right now. However, I should denote that this was just as of this morning still crossed down. So it's gonna really come down to the wire in the next, uh, what is it, three hours or so when we actually get the 12, the next 12 hour total close, which is gonna be very important because obviously uh, if we do end up up higher then we will get that formal test and then you know it's probably probably much better position as far as I'm concerned that's kind of what I'm waiting for uh, I did take a position this morning off of um, what was it uh, 30 like 39.20 and then I closed it on that last little down that we saw and so right now completely flat but you can see this market how you know how you kind of get walked down in these areas where you break this area then you come then you pop down over here and because you don't fully break down because you don't get that volume confirmation just get, you know just just gets picked up and tries again as all the lower time frame all sort of start to switch around so again that's why I want to see everything kind of confluent with each other that's why I monitor all these different time frames and we're not necessarily seeing it quite yet we're actually seeing the three hour and the four hour dildo time frames uh, switch to the upside three hour stokes have actually just crossed the upside four hour are hinting at it and they likely will on the next uh, on the next tick in the next three three hours and 30 minutes uh, granted price action ends here are high but for now it is you know it is kind of setting up and that is something I do want to you know keep in mind with the current price action as we actually have um we actually have taken out the high of the last couple of dildos right there not bad so keep in mind though that our other higher time frames are still certainly very much down you got your eight hours right here which you know still healthily down you got your 10 hours right here still healthily down they are kind of losing momentum but that is how you see all the time frames kind of work in cons confluence with each other as they look at kind of like straightened out at a higher level like this and then it's typically when you know your 12 hour your daily start to switch around is when you actually get that action so daily by the way is still actually up uh, as far as stokes go as far as rsi goes we are doing something we don't really have anything to be aware of here i mean this is the highest rsi that we've seen since uh july yeah july on the bull trap to uh, this area in 8,000 on price action and then the time before that was this area right here in march so rsi actually has been calling tops pretty damn well even when it does get in that more over <laughs> the overbought zone bro you know that kind of shit uh which is not my favorite way of using it but it does give you insight into where the resistance does indeed lie and the fact that it's kind of last lined up with these last couple major tops right here right here didn't get this one right here actually um, and then obviously our top at 20,000, that is worth mentioning as far as I'm concerned. And yes, I am kind of on the lookout and that's why I mentioned all of these resistances coming around in this area. But what I also wanna be very clear about is that I think that this whole, this whole segment of the market cycle is gonna take quite some time. I'm not really in any hurry to get into a position. If, if Bitcoin actually does confirm a lower high here, which it has not just yet on the higher time frames, it has not confirmed a lower high, um, then I would, you know, I, 
I'd rather rather be safe than sorry is what I'm trying to say. And uh, remember that, you know, it's going to test people, right? A lot of people are thinking the same thing. And, uh, and overall, got to kind of shake people out. But as far as this overall pattern is concerned, it does look to me, and it becomes increasingly more obvious, I think, um, that this is all to be considered just consolidation, looking at the volume signatures, looking at how it uh, has that nice orderly drop off in volume going from left to right. It doesn't seem like we've really seen the resolution. If, you know, if, if I was looking at a pattern like this, and I think the pattern that everyone was looking at, if I can get a fresh chart, was something like this, right? Yeah, something like that. I already have it in there. Um, if this was going to break to the upside, I want to see something incredibly, incredibly more powerful than this volume signature than what we see over here. Technically speaking, this would have a measure move, uh, I think, all the way from here. Sorry, I, this bottom one does not look right. There we go. Uh, something like this, you know, and that would be pointing all the way up into, you know, 4450, 4500 ish area, which. Bitcoin has to shoot through a lot of resistances before we even get there. I don't really think that that's that's certainly not my first look on this price action right now. However, you know, with I think it becomes even more visually apparent on the non-bit Mexican exchanges. But you can see over here on GDAX and I believe on Bitstamp as well. Yeah, this volume is pretty damn lackluster and really in the context of this overall formation. So that's what makes me think that we are just putting in something, you know, something like this that I showed on on bit mexico i think this would be my first read on it we have you know your couple your your pair of highs over here being governed by this ascending trend line and then your bottoms being uh governed by this ascending trend line as we kind of wedge ourselves into this uh major pennant major you know symmetrical triangle whatever the fuck you want to call it. i don't care what you call it i only care about which way that you actually you know break the support of resistance now of course resistance we are much closer to, re to the resistance than the support no doubt about that in fact if bitcoin could just close above the 89 exponential on the daily i would I would immediately look for a run to 41, 4200, something like that. Um, by the same token, you know, as long as Bitcoin's above 3400, as this does rise pretty rapidly over time, um, you can't really talk about a breakdown going to new lows. Although I don't believe that the lows are in for Bitcoin. In fact, I'm pretty, I, I believe pretty strongly that the lows are not in for Bitcoin. But not only in this area do we have to worry about this 89 exponential on the daily, but also if we go over here to our our Bitfinex chart, there's something very strange going on over here. Now, I know that Bitfinex doesn't necessarily trade against Tether anymore. They kind of trade against the dollar, which makes it a little bit more strange that there's still this premium on price action. For example, Finex is trading at 40.36, while Spot is trading at 39.22-ish area or, th or even below there. So Finex has actually already technically tested this 200 exponential moving average, this purple moving average on the weekly, which is very important to me. That is kind of my trigger for for get for letting go of being um more intensely bearish i suppose you could say of course there are there are multiple things that i'm looking for because i don't believe that the lows and because bitcoin has not done the six or seven things that i'm looking for to kind of be demonstrative of a low i you know i would only i would only be willing to really uh reconsider that if bitcoin would do these three things if bitcoin could both open and close a weekly above this purple 200 exponential if it could if it could go back above six thousand that'd be obviously be a huge thing but you're probably going to know beforehand although that is your more traditional way of knowing that the you know uh, bitcoin's technically out of bearish uh, bearish market um and then obviously uh you know a, a daily dildo uh higher high would be great as well as so we still don't actually have that uh daily dildos do not have higher highs until we get back above this high at about 4200 we could say uh, you could say or sorry that is on finex let's actually go back to uh to bitstamp yeah bitstamp high would be around 40 50 ish area so again you know keep in mind the areas of of the macro game that actually change this bitch around again the weekly 200 exponential as long as we're both opening and closing weekly doors below there no real reason to believe that the bear that that the bearish market is over it doesn't mean that you can't have rallies you can have rallies all the way up to there you could have a rally above there get a wick above and then still close below and that would still be in the grips of the bearish market and then of course the you know bitcoin got above six thousand that's your that's your kind of like no no questions asked we're out of the bear market mode all all that good shit again it's got a lot of work to do in order to do that but uh but it is worth mentioning for all, for overall perspective because i do see a lot of people getting you know um uh, feeling, you know, feeling like they fe feeling like the market cycles change when actually we haven't really hit any one of the three things that really matter. I mean, a higher high on the daily would be a good start and we haven't even done that. 
although it is getting pretty damn close. But remember, when I look at this, it, it does start to look overall like this is just another piece of the consolidation puzzle rather than a true breakout. I mean, look at the volume characteristics here. It's very, 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 very orderly, which tells me that this is not, you know, yes, we did see a breakout out of the lower area, but not necessarily out of the whole formation. So that's what I use on the higher time frames to kind of denote, okay, are, you know, have we actually changed around the macro picture? And so far, no. Doesn't mean that it can't happen. It certainly can happen. It's just as long as it has not happened, that's going to be my disposition is to be essentially looking for that next major local top because that's going to likely be the next big directional trade. So there is actually a there uh, there is a what's it called um, uh, there is an opportunity here to, uh, technically speaking but I do think that it's going to take some time to really formulate itself I don't think that we're going to see this thing like you know fall back down uh, today I, I don't think that's going to happen I think what's probably going to happen is that we grind this area for a while I've been saying that for a while that uh, Bitcoin likely to grind this area you know yeah we might have a couple moves down to test the low side of the range like we did last night uh, right here at 3860 3850 whatever it was. Um, but as long as we're kind of hanging around this range, that's, that's essentially what I'm looking for. Now, keep in mind, if we were to have an actual retracement on this guy, I would be looking towards initially, I'd be looking towards this, uh, this 382 Fibonacci retracement, which is all the way down here at about 3830. So this whole zone, as long as we're above 3830, I don't really want to even have that in my mind's eye that it's confirmed, you know, even local top in a way. Uh, and as far as reversal talk goes, I want to see it get below really the 786 down here this was your breakout point out of this consolidation so if we actually went back and violated that that's when i start to get back into oh okay it looks to me like this guy wants to reverse once again and it's and it's time to be look and it's time to be thinking about you know directional trades um and uh and, and that's that's essentially where i'm coming from right now but keep in mind and this is where I, this is kind of where i get the perspective where i'm where i think to myself okay hold on looks like i just uh did i just scalp something yeah, apparently I did. Okay, nice. Just bought 39.14 and a half, so I'm basically neutral right now on position. Okay, cool. Awesome. Great. Okay. So, 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 uh, when I look at something like this, I do want to be cognizant of this four hour total golden cross right here. Why is that? Well, basically, this is why I don't think that Bitcoin is going to initiate like a major reversal anytime soon. And in fact, why I'm happy to be waiting. And the reason why I'm happy to be waiting is because, well, at the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just fucking simple. I might even just wait for a fucking four hour total death cross. Uh, but hey, the last few times that we've actually had golden crosses on the four hour total time frame, we've had some pretty damn good reactions. Now to put in perspective, I'll start with this guy down here, which from the actual cross to our current high, we played at about a 12% move and it's been over the course of about, I think five days. Yeah, we, yeah, we're going to be on, we're going to be going on day five, a little bit later today. Now let's go back to the last time that we actually got golden cross, which by the way, was all the way over here in September, September golden cross. And then once it got death cross, it never, never got golden cross again before, before now, essentially. Uh, but you look at this area right here and from bottom to top, we had a, what was it? This was about a, a 9% move and it took about six days. So even this very weak cross over here, and yes, this what this was a weaker one, a weaker example, uh, it still played out for six days, which, you know, yeah, we're actually kind of right around the corner from that. And just by tomorrow, we will have done that. The time before that was a much more powerful cross. And this is what I want to get to. And this is kind of what I feel is perhaps a little bit more likely. Uh, but look at this guy right here. You get your cross down here and you play up a move all the way up to about 25%, 26%. Very powerful indeed compared with our current move of what was it? 14 or sorry, uh, 12. It was 12%. And this one took about two weeks, about 13, 14 days. Then the time before that, that we actually had a golden, uh, a four hour total golden cross was right here in April leading to this bull trap. This one took about 19 days, as you can see, and it's about an another 26% one. So again, my point is, is that these things can take some time. And while I am overall looking for, um, I, I am looking for something like that to play out, uh, like like actually resulting in a, in a massive bull trap. It could take some time, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, and it also might it also implies that this could you know happen at 4,100, 40, maybe even 4,400. Although I'm not, I think that's a little bit less likely right now. 
um, right here. This was a time before that, and this is the last one that I'll kind of go off of. But again, this was a more weaker one, about 15 or th sorry, 13% from bottom to top. And this one took about a little over five days. So just to kind of put in perspective on the actual strength of this one right here, which isn't really showing like major weakness just yet. And I do believe that our four hour stokes, like I said earlier, are they 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 look like they do want to cross the upside. They do look like they want to cross the upside. And this just looks like it's, you know, it's it's gonna give another try to this area. So I probably will try another trade around 39, 60, some, somewhere around there, uh, somewhere around the daily uh, 89 exponential is kind of where I'm looking at. Um, and uh, and that's 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 what I'll be waiting for right now. So again, it could take all that time. Let's also just take it a step further and look at the 12 hour right here. Now this this pink moving average, that is your 200 simple moving average. And there's actually a, a, a very interesting trend that I see on the 200 simple moving average for the 12 hour total time frame. And going back all the way over here to the last time that Bitcoin was actually above it, well, you see a very similar signature. Bitcoin was above it for a little bit of time but it pretty much called this bull trappy area, right? You know, you did get about what you, you had about, yeah, about an eight, seven and a half percent rally from there. It's pretty, it's actually pretty, pretty damn consistent with what the golden cross did actually. But we can go back a little bit further and see that that's not necessarily all the way, all, always the case. In fact, this, this time over here, where it got above the pink 200 simple, we had, you know, another 10% move. So pretty much in line with that. And once it got back below that called the bull trap ex extremely well. So I would also be looking at that. And this one took, you know, about eight days. Then if we go to the time before that, it also called the bull trap pretty fucking well. Once Bitcoin got above the 200 simple right here, it maintains above there for a little bit of time. It gets another drive above there, but eventually once it fails below, I mean, that's, that was a move from 10,000 to 6,000. And if we just, you know, if we just do this guy out about another 10% move above this area, now you might be noticing a trend as three times does make a trend. And then the time before that, it, it never really, well, I mean, the time before that it was, it was above it the whole fucking time, right? <laughs> you know, all the way from like $4,000 to $20,000. So not necessarily too relevant. Uh, but the, but the thing is that we are above it right now. And at the current moment in time, we've gotten about 3% above. So, you know, all the other ones were about 8 to 10%, which would put us somewhere, you know, right around where, right around here, actually, your former high. So 4250. I don't really have anything pointing towards there. I mean, it is, you know, it is kind of uh, meeting these resistances right around here. But I don't have any other measure moves pointing towards there. I don't have really have any, any other thing to be looking at around there. Maybe the, is the weekly 21 coming in there? I'm curious. Let's see if he is. Uh, weekly 21 is coming in. No, it's coming in much higher at about 4,500. So yeah, it would be a little bit out of uh, question if things did just stop there. Um, but, uh, but, but just another thing kind of worth considering right now as Bitcoin is being resilient in this area, I think that the 200, no, the 200 exponential on the, on the 12 hour is well above. So, Hey, you know, just something, something more kind of in line with that more importantly is not to guess where the next, uh, where, uh, where the next local high is going to be. I mean, it's really, really fun, really, really sexy to actually get those trades. But what's more important is that the opposite is that we can actually get the opposite or, or again, it's not financial advice, not financial advice. We're just sharing, you know, what I'm thinking in these sort of that sort of same situations, which you might find value, but you, you might not. You might say crown. I hate you. And then you should tell me in the in the in the comments and also tell me that my hair is bad, too. But I will be getting a haircut pretty damn soon. But <laughs> there's no guarantee it makes it look any better. Anyways, uh, you know, sorry, the more important part is that once Bitcoin breaks down below it, that 200 simple on the 12 hour, that actually has called those dumps pretty fucking well. And a pretty damn good trade has been able to be made even off of that. Now, keep in mind that that 200 simple is actually coming in all the way at basically 3,800, which was that 382 Fibonacci retracement that we just looked at um, to kind of start off this video as well, or, or a little bit early in this video. So, you know, it's, it's on my mind, right? It's on my mind. And that's why I am looking for those plays, but also understand that there's there's various levels and with tentacle analysis it's never a done deal it's never a guarantee we're only talking about statistical setups what is more likely to happen and with those statistical setups that we can find it's only a, it's only a game of risk and reward or at least that's the way that i trade of course i'm sure that some people out there have a crystal ball and they can fucking you know never take a loss but as far as i'm concerned uh, at this date on february 22nd of uh, 2019 i've i haven't found anyone as far as i know who's been successful over a very long time period of time making millions and millions who has never taken you know a loss or even or even plans to take uh, or, or doesn't like plan to take a loss that's my point so yeah i did take a trade over here ended up being a scalp then i took another trade last night ended up being another scalp and then as you can see i'm pretty much neutral now so i am 
again, going to be repositioning at the top of this range. Once again, I'll try another trade here. You know, why not? Uh, because I don't have to risk all that much to find out if it's going to work or not, as risk management will be basically above the highs of these wicks. As you can see, that there is sell pressure around here. But hey, if it gets taken out, then where does my, you know, where, uh, where does my vision go towards? About 4,100. That's going to be your 12 hour 200 exponential and also your weekly 200 exponential as well, which I really do like. Remember, this 200 exponential on the weekly, on the weekly has been governing Bitcoin's lower high for the last three months ever since we got in this more aggressive downtrend in middle of uh, November. So actually more than three months now as, or sorry, uh, is it more than three months? Yeah, it's a little bit more than three months. Jesus Christ, man, this month, this year is flying by already. This is absolutely insane. <laughs> it's scary. It's getting fucking scary, man. I get older. I feel like I get older faster, if that makes sense. I get older fucking faster. It's weird. Um, but, uh, but yeah, again, and I always want to remind people, hey, I understand that there's a lot more long-term people looking at, at these sorts of videos. Um, understand that my perspective is coming from typically more of a short-term time trader, but if you are a more long-term type trader, you know, type, you know, minded person, what I'd be looking at is just these two moving averages here, the 200 simple and the 200 exponential, the pink and the purple. Whichever one breaks first, that's gonna be our next big direction. <laughs> It's, 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 it's honestly that fucking simple. And when I say break, I mean both open and close above or below, whichever, you know, respectively, right? Uh, so if it closes, if, if it does it above the 200 sim, uh, exponential, then we're probably going to have, we're probably going to have a run till maybe 4,900, something like that. Uh, and I, that shows how much weight I put on that. Now, do I think that that's likely to happen? I mean, I'm always going to go with the former trend until told otherwise. So I don't, I, I don't think that that's as likely. Uh, and in fact, I'm not looking for it. But there certainly are some things on the side of the bulls right now. You do have your weekly stokes pointed up. They are, well, still well below the critical zone, which is not a good thing, uh, contrary to what most people would tell you. Uh, weekly RSI is using the exponential support, so I do like that. Um, and what else do we have to look at? I mean, maybe the three-day. Yeah, three-day, uh, You could, I mean, I could, also, I could also just make it as easy as this. As long as you're above the three-day 21 exponential, I don't want to be too damn bearish. Now, where is that coming in around? Actually, the same fucking place that the two that the twelve two hundred simples coming in around, which is about thirty eight hundred. And just to go over the historical relevancy of this. Uh, when Bitcoin's below it, it's watch out below. When Bitcoin's above it, it actually has called. It actually has called these tops. I think maybe even better than some of the other indicators that we looked at. Just look at the last few times Bitcoin actually, ever since Bitcoin put in the twenty thousand high over here, every time that Bitcoin actually got above the twenty one exponential on the three day dollar time frame. It didn't take too long till price action, uh, t you know, didn't about face the other way. You have this area over here on your February double top. You have this area over here on your May high at 10,000. You have this area over here on your July high from 8,000. This area over here on your September high, just very briefly. And right, once again, we are above this area for the first time actually since getting the three day little golden cross. So I would be using that as a signal, tr as, as a signal uh, moving average that if we were to actually break it, um, to the downside, I would immediately become, you know, bearish once again. And we do see our three-day stokes starting to actually get a little bit up there. Uh, funnily enough, they're actually getting right to the neutral zone, which actually did stop the highs in um, in January here in early January. So it did cause the highs over there, and that does tell us that there is resistance around this area. But I do believe that the two-day dildo time frame has actually been getting this better. And the two-day dildo time frame is actually getting above the resistance area that we saw going all the way back from September, and then again our highs in December and highs in early January. So uh, so the two-day actually looks like it wants to have a shot at the, at the 55, to be fair. I mean, it actually does. Um, it is getting a little bit more tired, but uh, as long as, but to keep this in mind, if we actually did confirm a local high here, then the divergence spots are gonna take over once again as we'd have some hidden bearish divergence and we'd have, well, we just have gravity take over that at that point in time as the lower time frames do have some bearish divergence. I believe the 12 hour, no, the 12 hour does not. What is about the 10 hour? Yeah, 10 hour does. 10 hour, or, no, it does it. It does not. It does not. I apologize about that. It's the eight hour that has the bearish divergence. And nope, that does not, that does not either. I think I'm, th I, I'm thinking of Mr. Buterall perhaps. The four hour definitely has some bearish divergence. Uh, maybe the six hour, six hour, six hour has some bearish divergence as well. But, uh, when you're when you're acting like this on price action, I would not uh, I would not be positioning right now, I'd not position be positioning right now. So we'll have to go to the other ones to kind of do the rubber breaker. But before that, let's go check out GBDC. GBDC doing the inverted fucking mushroom blown the blown mushroom tip over here, which is just an, uh, this is just ugly OTC bullshit. Um, 
Now, of course, it does look like we're putting in a local high here, uh, just below this uh, and, and another local lower high as well, local and lower below this guy and below this guy. But uh, Jesus Christ, man, what a fucking ugly chart. I'm sure it's what the daily looks like. Yeah, daily held above the green 55 exponential. So again, you know, I'd be looking at that area to kind of be the signal for, okay, are we still, you know, are, <laughs> are we, you know, are we still holding it up or not? That is, that is very appropriately the support. It looks like being held up over here on uh, the 19th and then again, right over here. So, so what I'm thinking right, uh, right now is that if we were to actually break the 55, we're probably going to come back down and fill the gap here, which would be, which would bring spot somewhere right around 35, 50, 3,600 ish area. And that would obviously have implications with breaking all of those levels that we just spoke about. So all of the confluences between them is, you know, would start to really build up, right? Uh, let's go check out CMEs. CMEs will be closing later today, by the way. So expect some, <laughs> expect some likely uh, fucked up price action. And CME is looking a lot different than spot right now, looking significantly different than spot actually look at this look at this our our uh we closed above the 55 exponential moving average yesterday in fact i would even say that these charts are much more clean you had a beautiful cross right here and then we're just kind of consolidating above the 55 i mean this looks like it wants to roll a little bit more uh daily soaks getting up there but that's okay daily rsi uh just reaching for the bullish control zone for the first time in a long time but hey uh, it's getting up there, man. It is getting up there. I am curious what the jewel is saying uh, on spot charts. What is the jewel saying down here? Give you insight into what the jewel does. By the way, actually, I should I should announce that um, I did add more payment plans for the jewel. So it's it's like the tentacle analysis program now, where there's like multiple different monthly type plans. You know, if if you don't want to pay it all up front at once, uh, you can do it over time. Of course, for whatever reason, and I guess this is just an insight into humans. People want the jewel more than they want the tentacle analysis program, which is fine. You know, I'm not here to be anyone dad but understand that the tentacle analysis program is an all-encompassing program that goes from top to bottom with tentacle analysis risk and position management market dynamics and then you know 20 plus bonus modules so it's like it's almost like 40 it's probably approaching 40 hours uh, uh long by now um the jewel is just indicators nothing else and videos on how to use them of course but uh but you know you don't get like the risk management you don't get the position management management you don't get the other you know indicators i mean of course, the jewel is very powerful, but my fear is that people are my fear. My fear is actually peop, that that people are buying it and not understanding that you it's not you still need to know your general skills. It's it doesn't make up for that. It doesn't make up for that. OK, Bitcoin taken up. But on the jewel right now, you can see that each and every time we've actually reached up to this 80 marker that has actually called tops pretty well. This was your last July high um, at uh, at 8000. This was your last high at 7400 um where are the times before that this was your last well this this did this one did not get the high too well it gave you divergence on the second spike though between here and here but it did tell you to be cognizant of this and then obviously the same thing over here actually where you had spike one spike two and then divergence on this getting in that same area initially though so it tells you to be it tells you to be on guard but also what does that imply it implies that we could very easily have that that secondary spike so it is something that i'm heavily considering right now of course the 89 exponential on the daily needs to be taken out to the upside don't want to get too damn ahead of myself and it's you know it's going to it's going to take a lot to really chew through our current area um but if this area does get taken out then yeah i start looking towards 41 4200 something like that uh would look about right so keep that keep that in mind um price action can actually uh, is signaling a few things right now it's signaling a few things so that's what i'd be aware of but also more importantly i'm looking for that next local high that, that, that next local high um okay cool so we talked about that let's go talk about the crypto fear and greed index that's actually ticked back up to 61. it got all the way to 65 just a couple days ago which is the highest that we've seen it ever since uh here in may which was you know the top at ten thousand. this one is every time that it's got above uh the 50 or si or especially 60 marker in the last year quite literally in the last year it's called tops really fucking well now again timing these sorts of things more difficult i don't want to make it sound like just because it's there right now that's it's telling you today right now fomo in no it says be aware of these sorts of things in confluence with all the other things that we looked at on price action which actually i put significantly more weight on but it's just interesting that uh that that you know another another piece of the mark dynamic kind of lines up with this you can see it's it's called tops pretty damn well the double the double top in february last year uh right here uh tops at uh ten thousand right here tops at uh, 8,000 right here, 
tops at uh well it wasn't really a top but it was the right before bitcoin went from six thousand to three thousand the crypto fear and greed index ticked up to a 56 and once again we're in this area i mean we're actually ab above that area right there but uh you know the th the, th the third highest that we've seen in the last year it's very 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 revealing <sighs> how irrational um, in, in, in the amount of distance that that crypto that the cryptocurrency line can have when you see something like this, which is quite scary. People are getting more greedy than they have been in almost a year, in almost one full year, when Bitcoin has quite literally been going down for that whole year, making lower highs along the way. And even in the most recent price action, it's still making lower highs as it stands. Of course, as it stands, this can very easily change around. But my point is, is that even without changing anything on the macro, the, the overall feeling of the market is completely out of sync with what the tentacles uh, suggest. So this is the difference between them, and it really show and really helps show and really helps, you know, separate our own selves from our from our cognitive dissonance, myself included, because this is why I always say I don't trade my opinion. My opinion is worthless. My opinion is fucking worthless. I try to I trade technical analysis because it kind of helps get me away from getting sucked into those more exuberant, irrational type things. So again, let's go check out the longs and shorts. Uh, longs and shorts, a uh, little under twenty five thousand open longs. So longs distributing even more. Again, this is not good. It's actually not good that longs are letting go of their positions right here. Uh, shorts, on the other hand, kind of being stagnant. Longs paying an actual funny rate. Shorts not paying any funny rate. Uh, let's go look at it on the actual charts themselves. Longs at about 20, a little under 25,000 open longs, which is starting to actually get down there. Uh, which, by the way, when longs get down like below this, tw uh, like below 20,000, just like shorts, that actually does match up with the major pumps, you know, funnily enough. So keep in mind this sort of thing as it does matter. And, I, and you know, to be consistent, I would put weight on this. If this, you know, if, if longs get down around there while well, shorts are down around there as well, it's. <laughs> Fireworks are inbound because there's going to be a shit ton of open interest. I mean, anyone can throw in positions now. Uh, shorts, on the other hand, again, they are in this critical area, which has lined up with every fucking dump of the last year. Again, though, doesn't mean that it's happening today, right now, this second. But we actually do have the exact same ratio that we had in November before the drop of 6,000 to 3,000 as we do right now. We're actually a little bit, little bit more in favor of the, uh, of the shorts, I suppose. Um, but, you know, right in this area, below 20,000 was was where the uh, shorts were and the longs were uh, right over here right around twenty five and a half thousand so we're actually a little bit below that so keep that in mind but more importantly for the shorts is that each and every time that we have gone below here that has lined up with major major dumps it has been the impetus for that again going back this was your you know your march dump your may dump from ten thousand six thousand your uh your early august dump from eight thousand six thousand your november dump from six thousand three thousand once again we're, we're here so it's actually been perfect to the last year and it is something that i want to be very 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 cognizant of it tells me again don't get caught up in the exuberant irrationality of the market so again please understand understand what I'm trying to convey here is essentially nothing's changed from the macro and we do have a lot of things suggesting there very well could be some <laughs> uh, <laughs> some surprising some surprising price action it's on the radar remember on the on the radar is probably the right terminology to use whoops we got way too many retracements over here um, so yeah, uh, what else do we want to look at? Let's go look at, um, traditional marks really quick. Uh, spies closing the day down actually, uh, first down day in a while. And what do we got on the hourly? So hourly looks, uh, hourly's not really telling me too much right now. Hourly's not telling me too much. I mean, as far as it goes, we are still in the context of this rising wedge, rising channel, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Again, I only care about how you react at supporting resistance. Uh, if you actually break it, um, with, with, uh, with at least like a two hour dildo close, maybe you could say an hourly dildo, hourly dildo closing below 276 now, then probably come back down all the way to about 272. But remember as you know, it's kind of like the same thing as crypto. I, my, my, my opinion is that I'm looking for a reversal. I actually am looking for a reversal. Uh, although I don't even trade this, but <laughs> that's a catch 22. Don't even fucking trade it, but still look at it. Um, I, I would be looking for a reversal, but the actual point in time to realistically be looking at and declaring a reversal is all the way down here at 262. As long as we're above 262 and a half, technically speaking, there's no macro reversal. 
in fact, I mean, there's there, there's actually more good things than bad things about this, although it does look like we're ready for a pullback uh, as we have approached this next kind of ledge of resistance, right? Uh, this next blocky territory here. Also, the 236 Fibonacci retracement, funnily enough, very similar to Mr. Bitcoin now, isn't it? Anyways, uh, I'd imagine that we probably do get a do uh, do get a pullback here. Probably pull back, you know, maybe low 270s, 274 and a half, maybe even 272, fill that gap, and then uh, and then probably try again higher. I, I'd imagine that it, at the very least we're going to grind this area, and if this area breaks, it's going to have a straight shot back to the former highs most likely. Let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin. Mrs. Litecoin was not able to. Very important. Mrs. Mrs. Litecoin was not able to both open and close that last daily total above the purple 200 expansion moving average. It did have a chance to, but it did not. It did not both open and close. It closed one above, but again, it needs to both open and close to confirm above. Um, now it is looking like it's like it wants to give another try just like bitcoin does as well so you know perhaps it's going to get another try over the weekend but keep in mind that critical area but also understand that your 12 hour dodo time frame is giving you you know your stokes are coming down your 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 12 hour r side is giving you one two three drives of bearish divergence that's not good below the exponential and hanging around uh, this is zone so it needs to maintain that but it's looking like it wants to come down yes you do have the 12 hour dodo golden cross so that'd be a counterpoint to what i'm saying actually the last time that this thing got a 12 hour dodo golden cross was literally at four dollars going all the way up to four hundred dollars so fair enough a hundred a hundred or a hundred x gains which is just fucking insane um but uh i think that the 10 hours are turning around as well yeah 10 hour 10 hour has potential bearish divergence in play as well one two um which does typically hold a lot of weight but even the daily stokes on uh on Mrs. Litecoin not turning around either. So it's gonna fight here. We are technically in the formation of some sort of a rising, you know, technically a rising wedge because it's not necessarily fully parallel, something like this. And yes, you can redraw it. When you don't get the volume confirmation on what should be a major breakout, and look at this, this actually works with that stab and that stab right there. I do like that. Um, then, you know, you just redraw it. That's why I don't like these sort of wedges formations because a lot of times you'll see you'll see breakouts that have no follow through, and that's you know that's that's what you get the volume signature from. So that's why, you know, that's why that's why I don't really care to play them because well, fuck it. <laughs> I'd rather have something a little bit more obvious. Uh, pattern traders, I, I don't really see too many successful pattern traders. They do exist, no doubt about that. They definitely do exist, but um i've met very few of them compared to other types of traders uh, let's go check out mr ripple's nipples uh mr ripple's nipples getting rejected from the critical 34 we could call it 34 and a half cent although it is a little bit above their um area did hit the measure move off this symmetrical triangle that we were looking at and uh oh popping all the way down to the 21 exponential that was a buy you know mr ripple's nipples chart is actually a little bit easier to read as well i mean if man I, i'm guessing that that was the uh the the pump that we just saw coming off the um uh, 38 90 ish area just to, just mr ripples come coming down to the uh to the 21 we will be getting a good cross on the uh on the moving averages here as well so no uh all, all good actually all good um yeah a few interesting things about this though it has confirmed a little bit of a lower high here or it's or it has confirmed a lower high here compared to this high and this high uh do we have any uh hidden bearish divergence on the rsi technically we do technically we do so it does make it difficult. You know, again, that makes me feel like Bitcoin can very easily grind this 3950 area for quite some time. And that, you know, if, if it gets stonewalled there, that's that's gonna that's the play. If, of course, if it takes that area out, it takes out 3950, 4100. Very, very, very and it's likely to be another one of those quick moves, I'd say. Um, and the reason why I say that, just going back to Mr. Bitcoin really quick, is taking off everything and putting on my volume profile we got nothing really above this current area sorry we do have we do have things above this current area what was i looking at before that that made me think that yeah on the lower time frames here you can see that there's very little holding it uh holding it right here so if we did get another move up the low four thousands is likely where it's you know gonna, uh, gonna find some support or sorry, find some resistance more more importantly yeah right around here you see the 4200 area uh, you know above this area there's very little stopping you know, from from overhead. That's that's a very interesting part. You know, that's that's the thing. When Bitcoin rips through here on the way down, it's going to be able to rip through here on the way up. Now, again, am I bullish? Do I think that Bitcoin's about to reverse? No, I don't. I, I don't. But just saying, hey, that's why my opinion's worthless. If if I did see Bitcoin above those levels, it that I'm not interested in being short for a little while. I'd want to see again a confirmed reversal. Again, it, you know, these things take time. I mean, this whole this whole phase of the market cycle can take you know, another year or two. It, it can. 
I'd rather it go faster than than slower, of course, um, as as I like you would would much prefer a bullish market. But I need to see a bullish market confirm before I get it before I get excited again. Remember, I'm going to be buying Elsa massive double G titties at 20,000 bitcoins, which I absolutely love. Titties are amazing. But I also, you know, I also do this as a living, so I don't want to get wrecked along the way. Um, so I want to be, I want to see full on, you know, full on confirmation of reversal before getting of that mind as well. Okay, let's get, let's go, let's let go of those. And uh, let's go look at uh, Mr. Buterall's, Mr. Buttersworth over here. And he's at 150 and a half doing the same thing. Actually, in fact, Mr. Buttersworth looks a lot more like a, uh, an ascending triangle right here. You know, just kind of wedging itself in this area. You know, we do have the resistance area in this red box territory. Does that mean it's always going to be resistance? No, it doesn't mean that. Of course, I think that Mr. Budor probably gets over there, you know, <laughs> at some point in time, not like bearish for forever. But uh, but hey, you know, in this area, uh, as long as we're being held up essentially by the four hour 21 exponential, I mean, this is, you know, it's going to try to reaccumulate in this uh, in this ascending triangle. And if this does get hit, I mean, where's the measure move on this? You know, where where's the measure move? It's going to be pointing us actually not that much higher. Well, you know, about one, one sixty ish area, basically in line with your former highs, which would still actually be making another lower high, sadly enough. Um, but Hey, keep in mind, uh, higher time frames are starting to get tired here. Just like Mr. Bitcoin, uh, uh, daily stokes really getting up there, but they can stay up there for a while. 12 hours are down. Uh, usually that's usually that's the first piece of the puzzle. Yes. Yeah, see, this is what I was thinking about before, uh, 12 hour, 12 hour RSI on, um, on Mr. Buterol uh, does have bearish divergence right here, right here, and back below the exponential. So that's ne not necessarily the best setup. You even have bearish divergence on the daily dildo time frame as well. And I'm going to guess the 10 hour as well, being a little bit more pronounced. So yeah, keep your eyes on that. You know, I am, I don't, you know, while, while I do think that we get another run up into that resistance zone for Mr. Buterol around the 155 ish area, whatever it might be, above 153 essentially. Um, and then Bitcoin, you know, above what is it, 3960, 3950, whatever it is. All the way to 4,000. We might get another run up in there, but I'd imagine that you know, with these higher time frames starting to signal a little bit of exhaustion, uh, just increases the likelihood that it gets rejected. Although you did just get a golden cross in your 10-hour total time frame over here. Although historically speaking, I'm not sure how relevant that is. Okay, all right. Um, what else do we want to look at? Do we want to look at? Do we want to look at some other shit coins really quick? Uh, Zcash, I think they just rebrand rebranded. I heard, uh, still still making lower highs, bad. Uh, Bcash, Zcash, and Bcash. <laughs> now we need Ccash, like C, the letter C. Uh, making lower highs. Tron Cash, making lower highs. Neo Cash, making lower highs. EOS Cash, making higher highs actually. EOS is actually making higher highs, funnily enough. But again, remember the area, the area of great interest is uh, $4.50. And if you want to be super conservative, I would even say, you know, when I'm talking about like actual confirmed reversal, uh, the super conservative way would be above $5.76. Above there, you know, there's, there's no real reason uh, to be bearish anymore. But you could even maybe make a decision at $4.50 around there. Um, we did Ripples. We did, uh, did we do Moneros? Monero Cash? Monero Cash, how are we doing over here? If we can load it, that'd be great. Uh, Monero Cash making lower highs as well. Yeah, again, you know, keep keep in context the overall uh, the overall posture of the market. Very nothing's changed from a macro view on most of these things. And from the macro macro, nothing's changed. I mean, still we I do want to bring up this fact as well: the monthly dolo time frame. The monthly dolo time frame will be coming in. I mean, it, it will be coming into into you know in, into our vicinity very soon we are what four days five days away from the end of the month no six six days it's the 22nd oh my god crown do your fucking math right sorry about that guys and yes i <laughs> i even sound like a big asshole because i talk to myself in the third person as well hopefully my mic is actually working okay great it is um and you see over here yeah the green 55 exponential on the monthly is going to be coming into con you know into into context and what do i think about this so the green 55 on the monthly right here, we have something very interesting, you know, interesting to be looking at. If we end this monthly dildo in the next six days below the 55 exponential, which is around 3680. So we are actually well above it right now. Then if we end it below, I'd immediately become very bearish looking for a, you know, a drop down into this, uh, into the 89 exponential down around here. Probably, you know, I, you know, again, am I going to say that it's, that it happens like the day after? No, it, these are monthly dildos. So they literally take even just one month to put in one fucking dildo. So it's going to take its time. But that that would be enough for me to start looking for some very big major trades, you know, directional trades, essentially because 
that would be the first time that we both opened and closed and confirmed a kill of that green 55 on the monthly in Bitcoin's history. And this would start to just all look like consolidation. I mean, just again, look at this. The wicks on these guys have all just been lower ever since uh, July. You know, every dildo has been lower, just lower, 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 lower. And we are still lower as long as we're below 4127 of January. And with that said, this would start to look a lot like consolidation. If this, and if this looks like consolidation, while these two moving averages approach each other, then that's going to actually be the impetus for intensifying a lot of the sell algorithms and sell programs of the of, of some major uh, of some major marked move in bots, which again they're going to be looking at these higher time frames, and that's likely going to send it all the way down here, and that would be at uh, mid 2000s. Now, of course, it could be the it could be the other case, which is what looks more likely right now. Uh, given current price action that that we closed the monthly above the green 55 exponential does that mean that it's bull market on no does that mean that it's bear market over no it actually doesn't but it would suggest that we have a very long this is going to just going to take a much more long time to play out which is unfortunate but you'd imagine i mean the market cycles are going to get longer over time they're going to naturally get longer as more and more people you know are in these markets it takes you know it's just more people to kind of chew through essentially you see it through here you know your first market cycle pretty damn fast i mean this was technically your first one over here but it was so fucking fast it was lightning speed then you had then you had this one right here then you had this one right here and then we're going through this one right now if you did get uh, the 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 way that i want to see from the monthly if we could actually switch around the overall market cycle is not the 55 it's the 21 it's this yellow moving average which is all the way at you know low 5000s so if we got above there then yeah i'd, I'd start talking about you know all right I'm, I'm not really bearish anymore or anything like that uh but obviously that's well and far away probably gonna have some indications beforehand so again, that's uh, that's kind of what's on, on my mind right there. Let's go back to Mr. Bitcoin on the lower time frames. I do see him kind of shaking around this uh, 3930 area. Are we still respecting this uh, trend line? Oh, we are. Hey, not not bad. Sometimes technical analysis it actually works. But I would be looking for a wick into this range and then probably close below this trend line as we kind of get walked down. Um, if this area is going to have some more drawdown from it, but you know, as it stands kind of just creating another triangle right now right so i would like to see another test up into this range um and i'd like to see that rejected if i am gonna you know i'm gonna probably put on another short around that range and uh and try a trade there but you know again gonna take its time i'm not really in any rush to get a position if i can get it above 39.50 i think that would be ideal um hopefully get some sort of a wake up into this region but just gonna have to keep an eye on it so again that's gonna probably do it for today i'll be back on later we do have cme's closing later today as well so we should likely get some uh, some juicy price action hopefully we can catch it on live stream as that's always fun it makes it fun when the girthy when the girthy dildos are coming down uh raining down all crazy but again um pleasure to speak with you on this lovely friday morning if i don't see you later i want to wish you a happy day i want to wish everyone a happy day anyways and uh say take care see you soon